Hi, Canada. Hugh Hewitt live inside of Studio North. The debate is tonight. I want you all to know that I'll be on the Salem News Channel after the debate, 11 p.m., but we're doing debate coverage early from the Americans for Prosperity. You see Akash Chogali right there. Akash, welcome back. Um, Where are you, by the way? Are you in D.C. or are you in Milwaukee? I am at my home outside of the D.C. area. Unfortunately, couldn't make to Milwaukee with a newborn. Um, but we've got a bunch of great events planned up oh, there. Oh, you're going to use that baby excuse? Right. You know me, Hugh. <laughs> okay. Akash, uh, do I ever see you down walking the baby by the river? Do you ever go down to the river? Not a, a, a couple times. I have, We have. Yeah, but, basically, uh, no, that <laughs> park in Old Town is where every child under the age of three goes on the weekend. So I'll look for you down there, Akash. You, Akash, you, you if you were running it. the debate, if you were running the debate tonight, I got, every, you know, AFP is a sponsor of my show. So I know what AFP would love to talk about. Inflation, inflation, inflation. How would you frame the question for the debate participants? Yeah, absolutely. And so it's not just that we want to talk about it. The reason we want to talk about it is because Republican primary voters want to talk about it. We have knocked almost 3 million doors and phones. We have talked to nearly 3 million Republican primary voters this year. The economy is far and away their number one priority. The way that we would ask it or I would ask it uh, is to ask what their plan is to reduce inflation. It's very easy to knock Bidenomics. We want to know specifically what is their plan to get inflation under control Uh, And if we're getting into specific issues, the three I would point to are spending policy, the federal budget, energy policy, and then regulations in general. What is your plan to get those things under control to create broad-based prosperity? No, Kosh, I talked to Brett yesterday, and I've been there. I've done that. You get one minute, 60 seconds, if you're a candidate, to answer any of those things. How do you communicate a policy that sticks and moves a voter. That's why they go to hot buttons because you can't move a voter on inflation because nobody's in favor of inflation, right? And everybody's in favor of cutting spending. If you're a primary voter and you're right, the audience is 30 million Republican primary participants. It's not the mainstream media. It's not Democrats, not even independents. So they get to vote in New Hampshire. Uh, it's the Republicans. How do you get them to believe you're the individual who will do the most on the economy? I think a simple plan to reform the federal budget. The process is broken. Frankly, the details don't matter in a one minute segment, but the entire federal budget process is broken. That needs to be changed on energy. It's very simple. Let's let's embrace energy abundance. Of course, the Keystone Pipeline, but get rid of these ridiculous rules on permitting, for example, uh, that's a very simple formula on energy policy. On regulations, I think you point to a couple clear examples. Labor is the one I always go back to. This administration has been very clear from day one. Their number one interest in labor policy is to enrich and empower labor unions. Our Republican presidential candidates' number one priority should be empowering American workers. Scrap these ridiculous labor rules that are sh- that are worsening the, the job shortage, hurting workers, and hurting employers. Now, I think you're acting as a debate coach here. But you haven't given them anything to say yet. I I mean, one of the things that I saw in the AFP program that I would absolutely latch on to, I would repeal the Civil Service Reform Act of 1978, and I would end tenure for federal employees. And I would allow every single agency to fire 10% of their employees every year, no questions asked. That's what I would do if you want the government to become efficient. But no one ever says that because they want to tangle with the unions and they're afraid that it's boring. I don't think it's boring. I think everybody knows the government is just, wait, there are 800,000 civilians working at the Pentagon. 800,000. Do you think people know that? No, you're right. There's 2 million federal civil service bureaucrats, the vast majority of whom have these civil service union protections, which to your point does two things, Hugh. One, not only are they completely unaccountable to the American people who they in theory work for, or even the president that they in theory work for, they're unaccountable and they have zero consequences for overstepping the authority vested in them, right? Instead of implementing laws passed by Congress, they're acting as lawmakers, which is not only bad for our economy, it's a threat to our constitutional system of government. I think that's a perfect example of something that the American people may not have heard of, but a Republican presidential candidate has a great opportunity to to say, we talk a lot about draining the swamp and going after the deep state. Here are three very concrete things we can do. Repeal the executive order on federal unionization get rid of civil service protections, and pass the RAINS Act so that Congress has a say over major regulations. 
You know, I, I want to I want to pause here and drill down because candidates teams listen to this show. If I was going to brief them, I would come out swinging against. I would use there are two million civilian. It's actually not quite two million, but I would use the number two million civilian employees. Not talking about the uniformed military. They all have tenure. And that's because of Teddy Roosevelt and the Civil Service Reform Act of the last 200 years, 120 years ago. Uh, we need to repeal that. We need to go back, not to a spoil system, but to an at-will department. Is your job guaranteed, Akash? Your job isn't no, guaranteed, is not. it? No, and mine is guaranteed by contract, but they can take me off the air tomorrow. Dwayne yeah. is not guaranteed. Most Americans do not live with tenure. Tenure is the antithesis of free markets, and it drives everything that's wrong with the federal government, both politically and economically. And if we could get these candidates to go after it, I think they would move the, the needle. Because the only people who like unions are people who are in the union. That's exactly right. And it's something that I think every can, you know, Republican presidential candidate, the vast majority of Republicans... Congress agree when I go and talk to them and their staffs about this issue, but it hasn't been a priority for a long time. And I think that is what's changing, which is very encouraging to see. But I think, as you were mentioning, this is a great opportunity to say it's not just something you agree on, but something that is a priority for your your administration. Should you, you know, should you be elected to, to the White House or even for Republican presidential candidates going after these civil service protections? Some of that stuff has to be done by Congress. And again, it's something they agree with, but they've never prioritized. I think it's time to prioritize it today because the American people are sick and tired of government intruding in their lives, especially in ways that they have no authority to be doing. Now, Cash, the one thing that you can do, if you've got both houses of Congress, and that's a big if, you can use the reconciliation process to get one thing a year, right? You can make one big thing a year. I would like them to repeal the Civil Service Reform Act of 1978, but I'm Reagan's last OPM director. I know what the Office of Personnel Management is. I know how big it is. I know how bloated the government is. And I was a kid, and even then I was stunned by this. I Do you think that that would connect with people? Or would you rather them say, I'm going to use my one big swing to go to energy independence and do away with permitting? Uh, and just everybody drill. Well, I, I don't think it's one or the other. I mean, I think certainly there are things on energy policy that can't be done in reconciliation. And so insofar as we're talking about that reconciliation package, right, it's budget reforms, it's things with budgetary impact. If civil service reform could be done in a reconciliation package, 10,000 percent, it should be in there. Maybe we don't get, you know, the, the requisite votes required. I would at least love to have that fight, right? Make the Democrats on the left defend federal civil service you know, the federal civil service and federal unions and these systems that no other American has the protections of against the regulations that are making their lives more expensive, keeping their shelves empty in grocery stores and generally making their lives worse with things like, you know, the mandates coming out of CDC and things like that. So I think it's, uh, a, it's Cash, a I want people to know it can be done in reconciliation because it impacts the budget. If you reduce the federal government by 50 percent, and provide the firing authority regardless of any other law. It gets into reconciliation. It passes the parliamentarian. Akash, where do people go to find out the specifics that you would like to hear talked about tonight? Absolutely. Our, our campaign running is called Prosperity is Possible. They can go to prosperityispossible.com. They can, of course, learn more about our organization, Americans for Prosperity, americansprosperity.org. The formula that we're talking about, Hugh, is very, very simple. It's Let's rein in reckless spending, free up American energy, and empower American workers. I think then you start talking about border security, education, transparency. There's a very, very small number of key issues that are not being talked about in the mainstream media that are dominating the conversations our teams are having at the doors and on the phones with Republican activists. That's what we want to hear this debate be about. Can my listeners join AFP? They absolutely. Absolutely can. We're a grassroots organization made up of volunteers like the folks that listen to your show who are knocking doors, making phone calls, spreading the message and holding lawmakers accountable. We're in 37, 38 states now across the country, active in all 50. Now, you know, I, I kind of think the debates always miss the opportunity for candidates to show that they know what they're talking about. Do you agree with me on that? They, they just yeah, never demonstrate capability. Different. It's a difficult format to get into details, but I think to your point, a couple punchy details about real plans to rein in spending, secure the border, create education choice are things people are going to love to hear. Uh, the specificity matters. I really do think the competence has got to be displayed by specificity with regards to any particular area. Head over to prosperityispossible.com. 
join AFP. They are a field army. They're actually the troops. They're going door to door. Akash, good to see you. Keep coming back. Americans for Prosperity is a wonderful sponsor of the Hugh Hewitt Show, and I'm glad they are. I am very glad they are. Don't go anywhere, America. Hey, Trump supporters, my number is 1-800-520-1234. Do you mind that he's skipping the debates? Do you mind? 